What's up you guys? Geek here from Geek and Chic and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make chain mail. This is a European 4-in-1 pattern, so I'm so excited. Let's get started. Let's get started on your journey to chain mail. So first, you're going to need some rings. I use 16 gauge 3 eighths of an inch saw cut rings from the ring ward. And you'll need two pliers. I use needle nose because it's the best to get in between those jump rings. You're going to take a handful of rings. These are your jump rings. If you see carefully, you can see that they're slightly open. This isn't what we want. So you want to take your rings and slowly twist towards yourself or away. But you want to twist to close your rings off. If you were to pull them apart, you would bend the shape of the ring. So make sure you always twist, not pull. So there's gonna be a bit of math involved, but you're gonna to have to close a ton of jump rings. I currently have closed over 12,000 rings for my chain mail shirt. So get used to closing those rings because you'll be doing it quite a lot. Once you've closed enough jump rings, we get to the fun part. This is where the European 4-in-1 gets its name. You will open one jump ring and put four closed jump rings on that single one before closing that loop again. This makes it so that there's four closed on a single one. That's where the 4-in-1 comes from. You'll be doing this a multitude of times until you have a good amount to start making your chain. So here you see me kind of just throwing the rings around. Well, the rings will eventually fall into the pattern that you need, so I like to have a bit of fun with it and just toss it around. So I have my two clusters here because I wanted to point out something. If you look at the middle ring on both clusters, see how they're both pointed towards the right? When you go to combine your two, you want to make sure they're in the same direction. As well as for the top and the bottom rings, they should be overlapping each other. And you'll see here, I'll kind of push them together to show you how I'm going to loop them in with the open jump rings. But basically, your first cluster should be overlapping your second cluster. And then we'll take an open jump ring and you're gonna go through two rings. Here, I'm gonna go down, down, through the bottom, and then up, up, through the top. Now this part can get a little tricky because the rings do like to move in your hands. Just keep telling yourself, down, down, up, up. So you'll go down through the first one, down through the second one, up through the first one, up through the second one, and then close your ring. So once you have those two together, get another cluster, open another jump ring, and get ready to continue this process. You'll do this a handful of times until it gets to the length you want your desired chain to be. This is the beginning of your chain line, and this is what's going to make a chain sheet. So mine, I normally have a chain sheet of 24 by 24 inches, and each cluster is an inch by an inch. So it makes it easy for me to do my math. But once you get it all settled, you'll start your chain. Now, chain mail's a ton of fun, but don't expect it to be easy at first. I wanted to show you here what would happen if you were to combine your two ring clusters in opposite directions. So here, I go back through the down, down, up, up technique that I told you before, and I close my ring. But something's very different with this, and this is your first indicator that you've done something wrong. It's okay though, you can always go back and fix it. See this chain? This doesn't look right. This is your indicator that you've added your rings incorrectly, but it's okay. Just undo that jump ring, connect it the right way, and you will be on your way with your chains once again. Now that our chain strand looks good and it's at its desired length, we can go ahead and get started on a chain mail sheet. So here I have an individual strand and I'm gonna show you how to connect it to another strand. Here I kind of already have a chain mail sheet going on so it's easier for me to show you, but it's going to be the same technique. You wanna make sure that each strand is lined up in the correct direction and then you're gonna do the same down, down, up, up motion. Just connecting the two bottom 
with the two top of the next row and connect your chains that way. So this is definitely one of the more harder times in chain mail is connecting your two strands. It's a lot like crocheting and if you accidentally miss a loop, you're kind of screwed and have to undo all of your hard work. So take the time, be patient, and line up your two strands correctly in order to connect them down the center. It's a lot of fun when you get the hang of it, but just be patient and you'll get there and make your own chainmail shirt soon. Once you get to that last ring, you can take a deep breath because you have officially made your first strand in making a chainmail shirt. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy this video, please consider giving it a big thumbs up. That would be great. I have so many cosplayers coming to the channel this year, such as Nyx from Hades and Link from Legend of Zelda. So if you really want to stick around for those and the tutorials I'll be producing, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to maybe catch a live stream and join me as I make this amazing project, then subscribe to my Twitch. Follow me there, and I do live streams at least once a week, so I really think you'd enjoy those. And follow my other social medias, all are listed below. So thank you guys once again, and until next time, I'm Geek from Geek and Chic, and this is me, geeking out. So see ya!